Liberal activist David Hogg continues to wear a face mask despite being fully vaccinated. And the reason is ridiculous. A Space Force officer was relieved of command for warning against Marxism in the military. Plus, Joe Biden's Transportation Secretary, Pete Buttigieg, confirms the usefulness of energy pipelines. All that and more, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. All right, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with liberal activist snowflake David Hogg because he's back in the news. He's fully vaccinated. He continues to wear a mask. And the reason, you won't even believe it. But then again, it's David Hogg, so maybe you will. And for those of you who aren't familiar with him, he is a liberal activist. He recently, a few months ago, decided to try and take down Mike Lindell and the My Pillow Company. He was going to make a different kind of pillow, a left-wing pillow, you know, away from the, all those evil corporate ideals, all that capitalism. We can't have any of that. That's what his motivation was, to make a different kind of pillow company and take down Mike Lindell. But then he realized, you know what? Capitalism, real work, it's just too much work. David Hogg has tapped out of the pillow fight. The gun control activist announced that he is quitting the progressive pillow company that he and William Leggett announced with much fanfare in February. Two months later, Mr. Hogg is abandoning his plan to show up My Pillow CEO Mike Lindell, an outspoken supporter of former President Donald Trump. While saying that the project was met with immediate and overwhelming support, he announced Saturday on Twitter that he couldn't continue. So Hogg went on Twitter to post about his decision and tell people that there's just too much going on in his life to focus on real work. We were met with immediate and overwhelming support, but I soon realized that given my activism, schoolwork, and family commitments, I could not give 100% to being a full-time co-founder at Good Pillow. Activism, schoolwork, family commitments. That's what's taking his time. And yet, he decided to announce to the whole world that he was going to bring down Mike Lindell with a different kind of pillow company. Maybe grow up first, then give it a try. All right, well, he's back in the news now regarding face masks and the COVID vaccine. He's fully vaccinated. He's encouraging people to get vaccinated. Yet, despite the new CDC guidelines, he says he's going to continue to wear a mask. And here's the reason. I feel the need to continue wearing my mask outside even though I'm fully vaccinated because the inconvenience of having to wear a mask is more than worth it to have people not think I'm a conservative. <laughs> this is unreal. He's fully vaccinated. He's going to continue to wear a mask though because people might think he's conservative if he takes it off. Think about that one. Here's more. I feel like this is something you can especially understand if you're in a very liberal area where 99% of the people you see are wearing masks. I guess the question is, what are those 99% thinking? What is the message they're trying to send? Now over at MSNBC, Rachel Maddow, she's having a hard time dropping the face mask as well. Here's some of her thoughts. Part of it is that I feel like I'm going to have to rewire myself so that when I see somebody out in the world who's not wearing a mask, I don't instantly think you are a threat <laughs> or you are selfish or you are a COVID denier and you definitely haven't been vaccinated. Wow. Yep. Watch out for those people without masks. They could be evil conservatives. We don't want to have any part of that. I don't want to be mislabeled. Now, response to David Hogg's tweet, there were so many good ones. This one in particular it used a Venn diagram to describe kind of where David Hogg is in space. You have the virtue signaler, the patronizing leftist, and the martyr. And David Hogg is right in the middle. So that's David Hogg, fully vaccinated, full-on left-wing radical. He's going to continue to wear a mask so people don't think he's conservative. That's smart. That's David Hogg. All right. Next, let's talk about what's going on at U.S. Space Force. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. All right, so next, a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Space Force was relieved of command. 
And why? Was he AWOL? No. Was he plotting some big attack against his own base? No. He was speaking out against Marxism in the military, and it cost him his job. Here's the story. A self-published book warning that neo-Marxist thought and leftist practices such as diversity training are threatening to undermine the effectiveness of the U.S. military has cost a senior officer in the U.S. Space Force his command. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Lohmeyer, commander of the 11th Space Warning Squadron at Colorado's Buckley Air Force Base, was relieved of his post Friday for comments he made defending his book's thesis on a military-themed podcast. You know, it's interesting that we recently had military leaders breaking protocol to blast Tucker Carlson online. They did that, and it was fine. But you speak out against Marxism and left-wing ideology, and it can cost you your job in today's military. And here's more. In an interview with information operation host L. Todd Wood, a former columnist with The Washington Times, Colonel Lohmeyer argued that leftist ideas and practices embraced by the government, academia, the media, and now the U.S. military are proving a divisive force in the ranks and that the Defense Department should take steps to return to a more politically nonpartisan course. Lieutenant General Stephen Whiting, who heads Space Operations Command, effectively fired Colonel Lohmeyer on Friday, citing a loss of confidence in his ability to carry out his command of a Space Force unit that detects ballistic missile launches. So Lohmeyer was asked about his book during this podcast interview, and he went into some of his thoughts on what's going on in the military and how some teachings, some movements are getting more scrutiny than others. In his new book, Irresistible Revolution, Marxism's Goal of Conquest and the Unmasking of the American Military, Colonel Lohmeyer argued in part that diversity programs and inclusivity training can be traced back to so-called critical race theory and its Marxist antecedents. Far-right political movements are harshly punished, but far-left movements and ideas deserve the same treatment, the author said. Asked about Mr. Austin, that's Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, Colonel Lohmeyer said on the podcast, I don't demonize the man, but I want to make it clear to him and every service member that this agenda will divide us. It will not unify us. So by the way, Lohmeyer says he doesn't consider his book to be partisan, and he was told that a pre-publication review wasn't needed. So he puts the book out. He does an interview. He speaks out against the left, and it costs him his job. That's what's going on in the U.S. military. Wokeness, cancel culture. It is invading everything, including our armed forces, and it's got to stop. All right, next let's talk about Pete Buttigieg, our transportation secretary, and the entire Joe Biden administration, because it is a mess. It's so bad, folks. Joe Biden is being compared to Jimmy Carter. It doesn't get any worse than that as far as presidential comparisons in the modern era. If you're compared to Jimmy Carter, you're doing some bad stuff. So let's talk about energy. Remember, on his first day in office, Joe Biden signed an executive order to kill the Keystone XL pipeline. A thousand jobs immediately gone. Thousands more that were waiting for construction, they're gone too. He didn't care. He's pushing the Green New Deal and all this bogus environmental policy that's not going to make an impact. But that's what Joe Biden's doing. And now, as if he needed any more problems, his transportation secretary, Pete Buttigieg, goes on TV. And remember, Pete Buttigieg, his main qualification for this job was saying that as a kid, he liked planes and trains. That's his qualification. He just recently did an interview with the Washington Post, Eugene Scott over at the Washington Post, and he was asked about energy pipelines. Uh, Secretary of Energy Jennifer Granholm said earlier this week uh, that pipelines are still the best way to move oil. Do you agree with that? Well, they do, certainly when you're talking about the efficiency of moving petroleum uh, products, that's, that's why we have pipelines. Perfect response which is exactly why the Keystone XL pipeline is needed. It was a direct route, a direct corridor from Alberta, Canada to Nebraska. But Joe Biden killed it. He didn't want it. And here's more. Scott was referring to earlier in the week when Granholm had also admitted Tuesday, pipe is the best way to go when transporting fuel during a press briefing regarding the Colonial Pipeline cyber attack. She continued to say that pipelines are the best way to transport fuel across a particular area of the country, which also contradicts 
the administration's decision to revoke the permit for the Keystone XL pipeline. Additionally, on Wednesday, U.S. Special Presidential Envoy for Climate John Kerry also contradicted the current administration. Kerry was asked by Republican Representative Daryl Issa if it is true the pipelines are more carbon delivery efficient than trains or trucks or other forms of delivery. Kerry immediately responded and said, yeah, that is true. There are millions and millions of pipeline running through the United States. Every single day, we've got oil, we've got natural gas being carried safely, not impacting the environment. And yet Joe Biden on his first day kills the Keystone Pipeline. That shows you just how beholden he is to the left. They've got him. They are pushing Green New Deal. He might not even know what's going on. Yet he signs these orders. People lose jobs and inflation's going up. Energy prices are going up. Everything is going in the wrong direction. And his own team can't even back him up. All right, next, let's talk about what's going on at Penn State University because they're getting woke, which means changes have to be made. We need to look at our labels, how we describe things, because most of the words are just too masculine. Words like junior and senior, they apparently have to go. And here's the story. The Pennsylvania State University's Faculty Senate passed inclusive language reform legislation. As Penn State News detailed, the Senate Committee on Curricular Affairs passed a resolution for the removal of gendered and binary terms from course and program descriptions. The university, as with most all academic institutions worldwide, has grown out of a typically male-centered world, reads the resolution's introduction. As such, many terms in our lexicon carry a strong male-centric binary character to them. Wow, you know what? Pretty soon, the word it is the only thing you'll be able to use to describe anything. Just it, because you can't sound too masculine. No way, you can't do that. You can't sound too white. Forget that, that has to go. So now it is gonna be the only word left to describe things. Here's more. The resolution asserts that terms such as freshmen are decidedly male specific, while terms such as upperclassmen can be interpreted as both sexist and classist. Terms such as junior and senior are supposedly parallel to Western male father-son naming conventions, and much of our written documentation uses he, she pronouns. Individuals at the university should move away from use of gendered pronouns when referring to students, faculty, staff, and guests in course descriptions and degree program descriptions. Such changes would take the form of replacing he, him, his, and she, her, hers with they, them, theirs, and non-gendered terms such as student, faculty member, staff member. The resolution also suggests departing from the use of academic grouping titles that stem from a primarily male-centric academic history in course descriptions and degree program descriptions. For instance, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior would be replaced with first year, second year, third year, and fourth year. This is unbelievable, but hey folks, you'll be happy to know this. In addition to their wokeness, they also have a big dose of snowflake-itis because in removing junior and senior and replacing it with first year, second year, third year, and fourth year, they also recognize that it might hurt people's feelings. Those who take longer than four years might be stigmatized, might be traumatized to be called a fifth year or a sixth year, so they can't do that either. They're going to call those students advanced standing students. There you go. They've got their wokeness, they've got their snowflake-itis, and they're all set at Penn State University. Folks, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. By the way, I was speaking this weekend at a rally, a unity rally outside of Houston. It was great, speaking against racism, speaking against violence. If you wanna check out that speech, you can check it out right there. I hope you enjoy it. Please tell your friends about the show, and don't forget, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. All right, we'll see you back here for our next show, which will be on Wednesday. Until then, have a great day. We'll see you next time. I'm Bobby Everly. This is a 13-minute news hour. Okay, friends, thanks so much for watching. And before you go, 
please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you'll be notified, and here's a special video just for you so you can watch even more of the 13-minute news hour. And don't forget to check out GOPUSA.com for the best in conservative news and commentary. We'll see you next time.